Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash I scream uploads. This is the scoop, the UK's self proclaimed number one video games podcast. My name is Graham Day, and I am joined by <laughs> Fucking don't know where I was going. Oh, yeah. uh, good morning, babe. Good morning. Can you hear me? I just I... realised the camera is so high up in the air. <laughs> As you look, you look. Uh, let me. Let's go, big bib for a sec. You uh, have a look of like small school child. Hello. Have you, have, have you seen? Have you heard those that that video? Of, like, there's a guy on Facebook who does videos of a kid called Timmy, and he rings people up with this little kid's voice. Like, like. Uh, My mom says is that that you can you can uh, you do you do face massages or oh, whatever like that. You look like little Bibby Timmy, little Timmy Bibby. But anyway, while Bibby does that, I will jump to uh, the split screen. Uh, my name is Graham, as I mentioned. That empty chair is usually occupied by the man that we call Bibby. And uh, we are Ice Cream. And this is The Scoop, your daily dose of news from the games industry world and beyond. And today we have some big big news to discuss. I mean, we don't have all the details yet, but there's a lot happening today. If you haven't seen already, uh, there will be some PS5 news. Let's we'll, we'll give you our kind of, not our thoughts and impressions on the news, because we don't know what that news is going to be, but we will give you our thoughts and impressions on what we expect could be coming. Um, and thank you, Starkiller Creed in the chat, who says, you know, you can buy followers at followingbot.com. Um, we'll pass. Hard pass. Uh, yeah, so... As well as the PS, uh, PS5 stuff, we have a few other things. And I did mention our thoughts and impressions. We will give you those on every bit of news that we have. But we also want your thoughts and impressions too. Uh, to, if you are live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads, then you are in the chat right now. Then please feel free to give us your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. And that's kind of how it works. We have a little bit of a discussion. And that's important because we do this live at 10 a.m. each and every single weekday. But then we turn it into an on-demand video that we put out on YouTube around an hour or so after the show is finished on Twitch. Those guys get to watch on demand. I said those guys. You could be watching YouTube now. So if you're high, uh, you get to watch on demand uh, on YouTube, but you don't get the facility, the ability to chat with us. So if you're in Twitch, please feel free to use that opportunity to get involved. Be the voice of the people. And that's even more important because then a little bit later on in the day, we turn it into four, well, one audio podcast that you can get in four different places. iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. All of the places get us right in your logos. And like I said, if you are in the chat... And particularly if you are an Ice Cream Upload subscriber, feel free to use the emotes because you can say, what do they say, Bib? <laughs> what what would they say, Bib? <laughs> Sorry, you went you went a bit you went a bit off then. <laughs> I was waiting for you to go. What was you saying? I said, I mean, I said, if you're in the chat, please feel this is free be to. A shit show. I apologise for anyone that's listening to this because this is going to be horrific today. I can feel it. Maybe he's gone on stage. Oh, he's moving again now. There we go. Um, yeah, I asked you to say, hello, but never mind. I've done it for you. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Um, so for those of you wondering what's happening, why Bibby keeps just kind of sitting really still, we are having a competition on the channel. We are seeing how still Bibby can remain. He's basically entering the World Stillness Championship. So occasionally you might see him sitting still. And it's not anything to do with a dodgy connection between me and him on Discord at all. No, it's 100. Look, there we go. Look at it. it looks. Oh, oh I moved really fast. <laughs> It's a dodgy connection between the two of us, but we will try to negate the effects of that as much as possible. Good morning, Phantom. Uh, how How is life as a man with 100,000 plus followers on Twitch? GG on the absolute milestone and a half as well, by the way. I mean, there's those, like I say, 100 episodes of The Scoop, 100,000 views on Twitch, but there you are 100,000 followers. Woo. Tasty, tasty. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Um, so, yeah, we have a couple of things to go through, we obviously we're going to start off with the PS5 news, which we've mentioned on Twitter. Feel free to check us out on Twitter at Ice Cream Uploads if you want to check us there. Um, but as well as that, we also have a nice care package from Doom. When I say nice, I mean fecking massive. Um, still got to get the views up, but getting back there. Well, that's the grind. But you are smashing it recently, especially when you're doing all night streams interrupted by baby sleep, uh, baby crying noises. I mean, fuck this shit out, Matt. <laughs> it's not for me. Uh, one thing I think we should do, though, in the meantime, is should we try end this call and rejoin this call, Bib? It might, it might help. Yes, we can try. I've just plugged my Ethernet cable in as well. I've just run the uh, the one from around the room, so hopefully that may have stabilised it a little bit rather than using 
I mean, uh, you, the Wi-Fi. You've not stalled at all for me just then. Uh, can, right. can you still hear me fine? Yeah, yeah, I can now. Since I plugged that in, we should be good. I mean, I should plug it in every single time we go live. It's only recently that I've stopped doing it, so uh, that's that's a big uh, that's a big uh, yikes. L on my part. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically we now we know who to blame. There's me thinking it's like uh, Epic Star Launcher or the Steam Bootstrapper. It's you. God damn it. Although I say that, you've just frozen again. No. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's jump into the first bit of news. Obviously, we do have... Do you know, I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek because it's massive, which is what she said. Uh, you may have seen... Maybe put a picture of this out on Twitter already. We have a mega, mega passi- uh, package from Doom, which we will open as we get to uh, the Doom stories later on. Uh, but for now, we will jump into... Uh, the hottest topic of the day, and this will obviously get a little bit hotter as the day goes on. Uh, spring it up on screen. There we go. As you can see, written by Tom Phillips for Yuri Gamer. PlayStation 5 system details coming tomorrow, and that's now today, via a live stream. So just days after Microsoft Talks, Xbox Series X uh, is the tagline. And hello from Spike. Good morning, Spike. I mean, Elmo. Elmo. Hello. Uh, so he's not impersonating 1920s movies then? What, where they kind of like stay still and then move really fast and it's like, yeah, he absolutely is. He's, that's, that's, that's what Bim's doing. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, into the article. And we're off just two days after Microsoft lift the lid on its Xbox Series X technical specs and lots more besides. Sony will talk PlayStation 5. Uh, one thing I do want to jump on when we get back to the end of it actually is is whether this was scheduled all along or they've waited for Microsoft to do that. But anyway, let's, let's jump in. So PlayStation uh, hardware architect Mark Cherney will present a deep dive into PS5 system architecture and how it will shape the future of games, which we'll be able to watch via the PlayStation blog tomorrow. Tune in at 4pm UK time for the show. We'll be reporting live. And there you go, embedded tweet, which pretty much says everything we've just had in the article. It says, tomorrow at 4pm GMT, PS5. Uh, 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 lead system architect Mark Journey provides a deep dive into PS5 system architecture and how it will shape the future of games. And then it links through to the PlayStation blog, which is absolutely triggering me this morning. Because, uh, I'll see if I can show it for you guys. I'll click on this link. Goes to a page, a white page, uh, which I didn't do at that time, but... It basically is redirecting for me. It hits a page and goes, page not found, reload, and then instantly changes to this. So I'm reading that as if there should have been a blog post there, or it will go through to something that isn't live, but I'm not I'm not quite sure. So if anyone checked that link out yesterday, did it go to a blog post that's no longer there, or isn't it there? Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the reason I'm asking that is because I wanted to do some live uh, coverage of that stream, maybe a watch along if possible on ice cream, or even better, ideally a core stream where we have the broadcast on behind and I stay at bottom uh, corner or something like that. But um, without any details on where it will appear, if it's on Twitch, if it's on YouTube only, we definitely can't cover it live other than watching it with you and you watching it on your own screens. But uh, yeah, so if anyone does have any details or sees any articles or anything with any more information, then please feel free to. Uh, fire the information over because that will be useful um spike says it does sound like they've waited uh, and now they're excited to trump them Oof. In- imagine uh, if it doesn't have all the teraflops not buying it said no one but the fanboys good morning mr tanvir how the devil are you sir um <laughs> gatekeeper tv hopefully see a peek of the console itself oh, that would be nice that would be nice good morning by the way good morning um Big Zombie says, if it has a 5 on the console, I'm buying it. Capot! <laughs> uh, I presume they'll go live on YouTube and Twitch like State of Plays before. Yeah, that's what... I, I'm kind of assuming that as well. Um, but even then, even if it does go live on Twitch, sometimes, depending on uh, the rulings of where content is and how people rea- uh, react to it, some people allow you to co-stream it, I stick it on behind me while I'm in the bottom corner. Some people, no, you do not do that because you're taking the views away from their channel. Uh, so I've I've messaged uh, Twitch directly just to see what, what the state of play is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, we will no doubt find out as the day goes on. Ideally, we could we'd, we'd do a live stream. Worst case scenario, we'll just rip it to bits in tomorrow's scoop tomorrow morning. 10 a.m. live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. But anyway, in true Phantom SFX fashion, uh, PlayStation 5, deep dive into system architecture, just a day or two after Xbox gets announced. Bib, thoughts? 
Uh, well, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts because uh, well, this goes on. I will be I will be driving home, um, so I won't actually get to listen to. Ed. Well, I might be able to listen to your thoughts and impressions <laughs> as I go home, <laughs> as I play you through the Bluetooth in the car or something. But yeah, I'll be very interested to see what he comes out with. Like, but I'm sure it was spite. Yeah, it sounded like they've waited and now they're excited to try and trump them. Uh, yesterday we talked about um, Microsoft dealing their hand. In regards to giving their a, a complete deep dive into their systems, uh, the specs, what it'll look like, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and it was was it? It was Tuesday, is it? Yeah. So we sat in this very studio when I said, "Is the ball in PlayStation's court now?" In regards to what it is that they, the message that they, they come out with, are we going to see the console soon? Are we going to see the specs? Are they going to literally say, "Okay, well they've got uh, expandable hard drive, which uh, needs to be." Um, What's the word that they used for it? Uh, so you use the memory card. Proprietary. Yeah, it was a proprietary storage system and things like that. Are PlayStation going to come out and say, actually, you can just plug in any kind of Toshiba or Seagate or whatever it could be, kind of hard drive, plug it in there, save yourself 50 quid. Uh, are we going to try and trump you in regards to the power performance, blah, 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 wait for them to throw all of their message out and then um, basically just give a big dirty backhand uh, to the other side of the net? see that we'll see how it plays today it's their first big marketing message uh, that they're going to be putting out there so we'll see how well uh, how well they actually do it and how much they tend to cover in these situations uh, just before we carry on with the PlayStation content obviously you've mentioned the uh, Xbox proprietary expansion cards um, since we were live on the air yesterday. Uh, Xbox clearly in demand uh, uh, in response to Ice Cream Uploads' daily podcast uh, have released a little bit more information on those proprietary expansion cards. So if I could bring this up on screen. And in the meantime, thank you very much for the host, Phantom, you absolute ledge. Uh, good good morning to anyone watching from Phantom's channel. Uh, my name is Graham. You can't see me on screen. You just have to pretend I'm actually here. Uh, and Bibby's also here too. <laughs> uh, so, so this obviously is what the proprietary expansion cards look like. These are the ones that have been made with custom NVMe SSD uh, technology. So essentially they can plug directly into the, the hard drives of the, well, well not hard drives, not the, they can, let's just say they can plug directly into the console so that they can run faster. They've been made custom for that. Um, and we did mention, I wonder if they'll make Seagate like add-ons, whether you have to buy the Xbox yeah. ones. I mean. They actually clearly took our advice and Seagate manufactured the official ones, as we can see there on screen. So you're welcome, guys. We've got you, we've got you covered. Um, but In regards yeah. to that part, though, it means that we are getting a trusted SSD. Um, fair enough, it's going to be customized. It's going to be a customized um, accessory so that its intended purpose is strictly built for the new Xbox. However, the cost of it is going to be the problem. Uh, I've just tried to put a video showing the uh, Xbox Velocity architecture on screen, which is essentially what makes it all so fast. But Twitter videos are the worst videos in the world. Yeah. I don't, I don't get how we're in the year 2020 and Twitter can't have a video that doesn't buffer in the first like 15 seconds or so, or even not, not forget 15 <laughs> seconds, just instantly. God's sake, man! It just it looks like a smash lasagna every time you open it up. Doesn't it? <laughs> so yeah, there we go. That's the Xbox Series X proprietary expansion card uh, from Seagate. It comes with one terabyte of storage to add to the one terabyte of storage on the console we know that that's what xbox are coming with which then let's jump back to uh actually let's jump on the facts in the chat first fuck me it's handsome in this chat says shogun <laughs> <laughs> that's it's a very good point that. that's one way to make everyone in the chat give you a high five yeah uh, good morning show you all right uh, if I remember rightly, when the AMD CPU leaks came out about two months ago, the Xbox CPU uh, CPU was faster clock but less processing cores. Uh, I'm gonna nod. <laughs> I'm gonna, I don't know, but I also don't know what that really means. Uh, and obviously, I know uh, things being faster and having more cores is better, but I don't know what, which one would give the one up kind of thing. Yeah. Um, back to the chat, Spike says, "Didn't Sony lose money on the PS3? Uh, but PS3s they sold." Two. I swear I remember being told about the Sony repping our store at the time. Their business was to take up the loss on the consoles and make uh, the money up with games. Based on that, the PS4 uh, could be viable, viable as they smashed it with exclusives. I don't believe it was the same with the PS4, though. Um, the PS3, definitely. I know I had conversations at the time. I don't know if that lasted throughout the product cycle the entire life because there was, there was a couple of things that changed through the, the life cycle. The first one was the 60 
gig uh, console which came with backwards compat um I know that they were making a loss on that, but then they removed the backwards compatibility and they offered like, what was it, like an 80 yeah. gig and a 20 gig version or something like that. And then they eventually offered bigger ones as well. But by the time they started doing that, the consoles were profitable. So it wasn't all the way through the life cycle. Hey, uh, thank you very much to the- Ice up, let's go. Ice up, let's go. <laughs> to the most beautiful lady in the world. Uh, Mrs. Danny Day, well, I don't know who she is, but she just sounds like, Shazam. Anyway, uh, enough le uh, lecturing over my missus. Uh, Thank what? you, Daniel. Yeah, thanks for the sub, babe. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, that was it. Consoles, they were making a loss on the PS3s. I don't think it, by the end of the generation it wasn't the same. And I believe both con consoles were profitable last generation. Because I, I remember saying that comment and having someone... Uh, contradict me as in like yeah actually that's not not quite true at the time and they did provide evidence or something but so i, I believe the ps4 was a profit uh, profitable machine as was the xbox uh one x x x one one x s s one x scorpio one 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 version as well I, th I believe they were profitable too um but yeah 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 uh the difference between that is and maybe maybe someone could uh, correct me I, looking back with rose tinted glasses potentially this console generation that we're about to hit has has more not groundbreaking technology but more new technology in it so the fact that we're using ssds they aren't whilst most people have ssds i have one in my pc just here um no doubt most people in the chat have an ssd still still they aren't uh, widely used to the point where everyone has, has one. Quite a lot of people are still running HDDs. Um, <clears throat> so that things like that, putting those in the consoles, give them a little bit more uh, of a longer shelf life, but also add to the costs. So how profitable the consoles are by adding things like SSDs into them, I'm not sure. Maybe that's the reason why the Xbox has a separate proprietary expansion card because, yeah, they have an SSD in it that's one terabyte already. To have a two terabyte suddenly makes the costs become mega and no one will buy a 750 pound console so that's let's let's get a, a a separate expansion card that we can put on it and 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 also let's look at the fact that quite a lot of people were expanding the size of their consoles this generation anyway so why don't we just if people will do that by the end of it why not let's give them the opportunity to do that by uh sticking it outside uh no i didn't mean with the ps4 i mean uh based on the games they had on the PS4, the, their business plan was to make a loss on the PS5 and make it up with exclusives. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, do you know what? That's actually a good shout. I've not even thought about going forward. Yeah. I'd I'd thought about um, what happened in the past, and I just assumed the amount of consoles sold, uh, if they're making a loss per console, so they sold over twice what the Xbox has sold, we assume, based on... Uh, starts at Xbox obviously don't share their figures well Sony are happy to do so um, so that's a lot of consoles to be making a loss on but then again if you've got big games like the likes of uh, Horizon 2, God of War 2, Spider-Man 2 all all the 2's, that The Last of Us 2 remastered, remastered or whatever comes out then yeah, yeah potentially that's, that's, I'd not even thought of that I would, I think it's it's a risky business plan because if, if they don't have stats or architecture that could match the xbox series x uh then they will have a lot of consoles that will be making them uh, taking them into debt but they're not selling as many games so it is a risky strategy I, I, do you know yeah i'm not sure you might have a point there i would assume they would they would go for a profitable console but you never know you never know um yeah so we have let's jump back to the what the initial talking point we have the the is it going to be a state of play i mean they called it an architecture deep dive uh led by mark cherney who's a very very intelligent man also quite a, a scary looking man as i keep seeing from these memes of like he's looking like <laughs> almost like uh, willem dafoe from the uh, the first spider-man film there's like so many clips of him like looking eh. um, <laughs> but yeah that is happening tonight and obviously we've, we've touched on it and spike's kind of giving his thoughts on it already a bit but what are your thoughts? Do you think, because we were talking, oh, there could be uh, uh, a PlayStation event in February. You even retweeted uh, a tweet about an event in February, which was which was false. Lol. Um, but... <laughs> I, I just have to think then for a second. You get to be fair. That was one of the few times that I've been done on social media and made to look a right knobhead. Unlucky. Uh, so, yeah, 
the rumours were, oh, it happened in February last time, it'll happen in February this time. We said, do you know what? It's possible. Obviously, we're now halfway through March. Have they sat on it, do you reckon, or has this been yeah. their plan all along? I genuinely think they've sat on this. Um, I think I've actually been saying this for a while. I think they've been waiting for Microsoft to make their move. Uh, we've both said in the past that when you're in first place, you don't have to do any catching up. You can literally just lead by the lead by the front. You have to wait for second place to make all their moves to try and bring in uh, and attract new audiences. And to be fair to um, Microsoft, uh, the way that they've moved the Xbox uh, from being in probably last place um, to a firm second, if not neck and neck. Um, if there was to start the console generation three years ago, then it would be a hell of a lot closer in terms of numbers than it has been over the last seven years. Um, so the way that they've been, been managing to remarket the Xbox has been phenomenal. However, they are still in second place. There's absolutely no denying that. Um, so I think Sony have literally waited for them to play at least two or three of their hands uh, and then just trying to cut, maybe not even capitalize, maybe just think actually we've got another absolute ace in the hole here uh, and we're just going to wait for them to deal all their messages because we know they want their messages regardless of whether they're not their first to market with them will not be able to compete with ours that doesn't mean to say that this is going to fall not going to fall flat on its face that i feel like this has to be now the biggest time for them to give their biggest market message of the year and if they don't treat it like that then a lot of people's heads may t may end up getting turned um, we'll have to wait and see. The, the the Xbox messages so far have been extremely strong. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to deny that at all. I mean, I'm not a fanboy of either console. I do have a PlayStation. I don't have an Xbox. I'm firmly in the PlayStation camp. But um, I've, I've got my eye on the, the my eye on the other side as well. I'm not firmly in one camp. Um, in my head, I'm already getting a PlayStation because that's what I've had last gen and it's treated me well. Same reason why I got another Huawei phone because my last one treated me really well over the last two years. So. Uh, I'd rather stick with the technology that I'm familiar with. However, that doesn't mean to say that I won't dip my toe in the Xbox market, providing that it suits the needs of me at the time when I'm buying it. Um, good morning to King Comic, who says, uh, how's things with you two fellas? Well, we're not too bad, love. We're talking about PS5 potential stuff happening uh, by the end of the morning, day. Uh, no, I agree. I agree. I'm, uh, I have both uh, PlayStation mm. and Xbox. I'm more in the PlayStation camp because that's where... Uh, obviously, looking at numbers-wise, that's where more people are more likely to have uh, friends that play. So m most of the people that I play with online are all on PlayStation. So I play on the PlayStation rather than playing on the mm -hmm. Xbox. Um, so I will most likely continue that going forward too, um, although I will no doubt get both at some point. Um, but jumping back through the chat, there was a comment a bit further up. I didn't touch on it before. I was holding it, and now it's gone off screen. There we go. Asim says, uh, there'll be about 50 to 75 pounds those Xbox SSD memory cards. Do you, do you reckon? I th see. I was I thinking think well more. I double that. I, I, yeah. I, would, I think it's going to be double that. I would possibly even triple that because uh, that's what I was kind of saying yesterday. Just, just by judging the cost of a one terabyte SSD, um, they can be around hundred and fifty quid. So if you're adding the uh, proprietary stuff um, on top of that. I, that's why I was saying I wouldn't be surprised if they were two hundred and fifty quid. Ideally, they wouldn't be. Um, but if they were, yeah, if they were two hundred quid, I think that's kind of where, not that I'd be happy with it. That's where I'd be like thinking, okay, well they're not marking it up mega, mm -hmm. um, but two hundred and fifty quid kind of almost gives me that brand new technology. Everyone needs it. We're gonna put a mark up on it because it's Xbox and proprietary and uh, so on. So, yeah. I, so I was thinking two fifty is where it's gonna be. Fifty to seventy five quid is amazing. I mean, th on the flip side, the fact that it's proprietary means that it will only work on an Xbox. So it could just it could be a case of actually we've got shitloads of these made, but no one's buying them. So the price actually isn't isn't. Uh, as high, uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, saying that, uh, going back to the Xbox 360, the wireless adapter for your Xbox, if you got one of the first 360s like that, like I had that didn't have wi mm -hmm. uh, wireless in it, I had to buy a wireless adapter. Um, you could buy wireless adapters for nine quid, but it wouldn't work with the Xbox, you had to buy the Xbox one, which cost 45 pounds, and it was just like, yeah. so that's where I'm thinking we're probably gonna mm -hmm. see Two to two well, I'm just going to throw another curveball out there as well. On the Xbox 360, we also had expandable storage bays. Uh, 
in both the slimline and the fat versions. Remember the ones that used to clip in at the top? I've still got my Final Fantasy uh, hard drive that came with my Final yeah. Fantasy edition. How much were they when they came out? Uh, I, I, I believe I, about, I can't remember. I did get one with mine, so it I wasn't that much of an issue. I think they were about um, eighty but, quid. If you because they had yeah. the what would they call it, the core and the arcade or something like that. Yeah, uh, the arcade came with a memory card rather than a hard drive, didn't it? Yeah. So I, I got the one that came with the hard drive, um, but I believe they were about eight quid to buy one of the hard drives, and they were like twenty gig or something like that. Uh, it was like the long. Uh, the one that I got was, I'm sure it was one twenty. It might oh, it have been, been eighty nine ninety nine for the big ones in our store. This bike. See, this is what happens when you got. I mean, we have about seventy percent of the UK's retail games industry in this chat right now. It'll be all the tech stuff which will trigger the fanboys. I hope they also show the console though. A price would be nice, but no, I agree. I, I think if they have sat and waited, because because in in theory they have nothing that is that is um, tying them down to this stream today. They are footloose. They aren't tied to an event. They aren't tied to a retail partner. Oh, well, at least I think so. There's nothing's been announced. Um, so they could do this tomorrow or next week. They've just gone, okay, Xbox has gone on Monday. We'll go on Wednesday. Okay, it gives us a day to yeah. breathe, and we can announce it on the Tuesday, and we'll go on the Wednesday. So Xbox, rightly so, are keeping their information coming to try to take some of the gloss away from it. But obviously, everyone now is waiting for the PlayStation. So I think if they've waited until Xbox has had their conference then if they are doing that so that they can come out afterwards and go, okay, everything they've said plus one. Yeah, so they've got 100 gig, we've got 101 gig. They've got 12 <laughs> teraflops, we've got 13 teraflops. I think we're fine. Yeah, 12.5. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, obviously, they, they will be restricted to whatever they actually are manufacturing, yeah. but then the way that they will present that will be impacted on um, what Xbox have done and how they can look better than that. They've done that successfully. Uh, already we keep talking about it like the last generation uh, jumping on the drm stuff that that crippled xbox from the start sony used that and ran with it to make their presentation hugely successful so i, I think they'll do that but yeah i agree uh, a price would be nice but i doubt it i completely agree with that i think xbox haven't released a price so sony are not going to release a price if xbox would have released 479 um on monday playstation would be 459 on on wednesday i think that's the kind of thing we probably would have had um, uh, so here's a question for you then okay okay go what do you think as a minimum we're going to get today in fact no scrap that what do you think as a minimum minimum you'd like to see today or what you'd expect to see that goes for you and the chat as well from this conference later on today at 4 p.m uk time the playstation uh company are going to release some information regarding the playstation 5 what as a minimum do you think you want to see or you should expect to see okay my thoughts with it being architecture and deep dive i i reckon as a minimum not that i want but as a minimum i reckon we will get all of the flops all of the uh the gigs and all of the gigahertz and and the cores and and the stuff like that all of that stuff will come because we are talking mark Cherney. Uh, that is what he does. We, we did it for the PS4. Uh, he'll be doing it again for the PS5. So we'll, we'll get all of the infrastructure and how it makes it better for developers and how it makes it better for uh, for uh, indies. And, and they've been working together with people to make sure that it's a better developing platform and, and stuff. We'll get all of that stuff. But what I want to see is... is I mean, I, I will trust in those guys um, in terms of give me the full package and when when i know everything then i can go actually yeah that sounds like a shit console i'm not going to get that but at this point in time if they believe it's good enough they won't be doing a presentation mm. with all the bells and whistles two days after xbox if they don't believe it's as good or good enough for them to uh, release anyway so we'll get that but i want to see i want to see these haptic triggers that we've we've had already so we know we know this is uh, a ds4 controller we know what that looks like that's great we know what xbox's controllers um are going to have in them we, i don't think we've seen them have we because they're, they're talking about the xbox triggers have got like extra nubbly bits on them so that yeah uh, and 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 we've seen the patterns for the controller haven't we yeah so i want to see the playstation controller because we started talking about that ages ago in the wired magazine i want to see it now so we know about it show it mate i want to see the console i want the form factor of the console at, at the moment i've seen it mocked up as a pizza slice heater i've seen it mocked up as a as a dyson hoover vacuum cleaner on the end of a stick which looked really good by the way uh i've seen all of that stuff now show me what it looks like because we keep seeing these sort of like ps4 slim sort of mock-ups but with a five logo on it i want to see it what does it look like so if i'm not getting uh, a look at it uh, uh in that sort of sense and all of the 
the deep dive stuff. I think that's what we should have as a minimum. Beyond that, I'd, I'd be interested to hear um, from a content creation side uh, if they would go into how the console has been developed with content creators in mind. I mean, can is it a much better streaming platform? Because because obviously we have a decent stream, self admittedly, on on the scoop right now. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do anything to this capacity on a PlayStation. Are they thinking of anything like that? I mean. I, I, they might not be, and it might be too soon for that. That might be too niche, obviously, just from what I'm requesting. But stats, hardware specifics, functions in terms of how many uh, slots, how many ports, uh, and obviously the main thing is what does it look like? We don't know what it looks like yet, so that's that's what I want to know by the end of the day. Uh, jump back up, because there was a few more things a bit further up. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, didn't they make some back on the hardware once it got cheaper over time? So show yes, 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 yes. Um, da, da, da. Interesting to see if they mention and stick to the end of 2020 release date due to COVID-19. Good point. Um, yeah, very good point. I've not even uh, factored anything in terms of the current global situation on that, but that's a very good point. Uh, it could easily be uh, rolled back a little bit. Uh, you have to think there will I think be we a have to, I think we have to brace ourselves for that, by the way. Yeah, we, we were uh, kind of talking that internally uh, in terms of business and general uh, outlook for the uh, general gaming economy yesterday. And that was one thing that we were discussing is like, do we think it will go back? It's quite quite possible. And even if it doesn't, it, it could unintentionally go back. They could release, but not have enough, which then creates a stockpiling situation. And you've seen people stockpiling bog rolls. You're definitely going to be see, seeing people on your Facebook marketplace selling a PS five for 800 quid if they release them without enough stock for everyone so brace yourselves um uh, i still think it will release at the end of 2020 but it will be like gold dust initially yeah exactly that's kind of what i was just thinking then uh that said a lot of people all isolated plenty of time to play games um, interesting i think they'd happily take a loss on those would be stupid not to but yeah you could be right uh, re ssd memory cards yeah it could go either way it could go either way i mean if they've got, I mean, that picture, we said yesterday, if Microsoft, uh, sorry, that picture, let me rewind. So Microsoft, uh, the comment there, obviously, I was talking about the NVMe SSD proprietary uh, memory expansion cards. We were talking yesterday, Microsoft will manufacture their own, but if they allow people like Seagate and everyone to make, uh, manufacture them, then it could bring the costs down. Interestingly, Microsoft aren't manufacturing them. As we saw on that image, Seagate actually are. So that could mm. give a bottom baseline because Seagate will have all of that stuff bought in bulk. They won't just be manufacturing for, for uh, purpose there. A lot of the cost could be amortized elsewhere. So yeah, it could be cheaper, could be cheaper. Uh, did hear that Sony are wanting to buy Konami games such as Silent Hill, etc. Uh, we, we actually touched on that on Monday. Um, we're talking about aesthetic gamer. Uh, not convinced, not convinced. Uh, the gist of the conversation that we and the chat kind of came up with was that it's it's a very nice clickbaity story in terms of nice round table you've got silent hill you've got sony you've potentially got kojima you've got konami ips and all this so it makes a good story but i, mm -hmm. I yeah i'm not convinced unless we, uh, it, i mean it could be wrong but i'm not convinced i'm not convinced uh da -da 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 -da. they could be hit by covid because uh flash memory will be behind in production that's true that's true uh bj haddock uh, a little while ago said hello but hello 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 <laughs> Spike, in response to your question, babe, of what do people want to see, says, I need all the details. In capital, all <laughs> the details. All the details. <laughs> well, do you know what? Actually, we should we should, we should, should take all of like these things in and make like a, a PS5 bingo. And, and we'll start off with Asim's one. We'll see a video of a lot of devs saying how awesome the PS5 is. <laughs> Absolutely. Hi, my name's Jim, and I develop video game simulator. And I think the PS5 is the best place to... De de developable games nice shit. <laughs> it's not just, yeah you just expect so it's because i like this console i've worked on this console it has flops <laughs> the, the flops of terror <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> flop slash power and maybe a showcase of ray tracing along with a first look at the console for show uh I had to drop out, but it sounds like there's no actual solid info. Not until 4 o'clock this afternoon evening uh, show. They announced yesterday that the... Um... <laughs> they announced yesterday. I've just seen Asus coming. I like PS5. I love Lamp. I like Lamp. <laughs> I love Lamp. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the 
architecture deep dive isn't taking place until 4 p.m. today UK time. So we're just kind of uh, kind of predicting what we think will be there and, yeah. and summarising whether PlayStation have kept uh, their proverbial cards up their sleeve uh, or against their chest even until Xbox have, have gone with theirs before they've uh, spaffed those out. And I think we're all in agreement they probably have. Uh, Gatekeeper TV says there is enough coming for the PlayStation 4 games-wise. Not getting on release date might not be a bad thing. Do you know what? That, that is the thing. I mean, I didn't get the PS4 on release date because I was dense enough to not pre-order it um and then and this is something we spoke about previously the price markups and we, we've actually spoke about it about four or five times because i believe we both feel quite angrily about it but the price markups <laughs> from the likes of game and, and co making you have to spend 800 quid to get i mean it was good it was good deals in terms of once you'd spent that 800 quid you actually got a decent value for money but it was the fact that you had to buy the playstation and extra games and an additional controller and some blah 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 which suddenly came to 800 quid uh, rather than the 350 quid or 400 quid that the console should have been um yeah so yeah i didn't buy it at, at first because there was a shortage in manchester and i eventually was just wandering around sainsbury's one sunday doing my shopping saw they had a playstation so i was like yoink <laughs> took that off the shelf i'll take that there so yeah uh okay nothing till four cool yeah we we may we may be doing a live watch along so uh if you get notified at four o'clock it will be me uh potentially dialing bibby in from the uh, m61 as he uh, goes <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> i'll take my earphones just in case you need me to dial in uh do you think we're gonna get a new net code for pez on ps5 do you know what? i have no idea um it would be nice because you've got to think new system architecture as with anything something designed for purpose is the best thing so trying to make old netcode work on something new whilst it will probably work um anything designed specifically for purpose would be better so in an ideal situation without knowing anything about the netcode on pairs i would say please yeah well we'll have some new netcode that'll work nice but yeah i've, I've no idea i i'll be in work enjoying telling customers who, we have no loo roll no pasta no paracetamol and no beans <laughs> uh, i dropped my little one off at school this morning i said hi me and me and uh where's she? she's not in the chat is she oh well danny day 83 um dropped chloe off at school this morning and went via tesco on the way back because it was early doors um and we managed to get two two packets of paracetamol and a pack of beans as well so uh oh, Who's winning? living it large in the day household tonight <laughs> ladies and gentlemen uh so yeah yes 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 anyway 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 we'll kind of leave it there i mean we can obviously keep coming but hashtag winning says i we'll keep coming back to uh obviously any playstation comments if anyone has any more as we go but we have a few more pieces of news to jump onto uh including opening the doom uh, mega box uh so shogun ash says people are bulk buying paracetamol isn't that illegal oh you can buy two at once and then go back out and come back yeah. in and buy two again and people literally are doing that i have 16 tins of beans in the cupboard hashtag rich man well that's it uh <laughs> so if we do devolve into uh the walking dead then spike is basically negan <laughs> he he has his own compound and that's it he's, he'll be trading in in bean currencies okay that's three beans for you my good man you're welcome welcome I'll be, I'll be knee deep in vegan sausage rolls by then anyway, so it'll be sound. <laughs> no, you won't. No, you won't. Uh, let's jump into our next bit of news. And do you know what? Because Spike's here, uh, and he's absolutely loving Battle Royale, let's jump into Spike's favourite Battle Royale. Uh, oh, no. No, it's not. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's the other one. It's the other one. Fortnite. Uh, let me get the uh, discussing now off screen. So Fortnite has helicopters now, plus an excellent new locker. It's written by Andrew Webster for The Verge. Um, I, I've played a little bit of Fortnite, badly, on stream with Bib uh, a week or so ago uh, and not touched it since. I will probably pick it up yeah. again at the end of the season to uh, grind the pass, but did not even know this was on the horizon. Everything, every conversation, everywhere has been either PS5 or coronavirus. So I, Fortnite has completely slipped my mind. So this has caught me uh, like a little bit left field. Uh, Spike, stop it. <laughs> Uh, so I told you you're not allowed to do that anymore. For those of you who are on audio po uh, uh, podcast services, Spike is doing the uh, sleep emoji in the chat. God damn it, Spike! <laughs> uh, so 
Fortnite getting a chopper. Helicopters are now in Fortnite. The Battle Royale game's latest update added the flying vehicles as well as a handful of other welcome features including map changes and a redesigned locker. It's a big shift but one that fits in well with the latest season's secret agent theme. Uh, the helicopters can be used by up to four players at a time making them ideal for squad play and they appear to tie into the mysterious Deadpool appearance in the game's new season. They join boats as the only current vehicles in the game. You can find them scattered around the map though, at least right now, there's generally a fight to be the first to grab the controls. All I'm saying is PUBG had gliders first mate, so whatever mate. Uh, uh, of course, this isn't the first aerial vehicle to be featured in the game. Long-time Fortnite players will remember the aeroplanes that were added in Season, season 7, which caused so much, hav uh, so much havoc even, that they were eventually removed one season later. Today's update <laughs> also includes some changes to the island. There's been an explosion at the oil rig that has devastated the base and left a dramatic oil spill, and the soccer field at Pleasant Park has opened up revealing a hidden helicopter pad. There's also a new spy-themed LTM, which is a limited time mode. Um, perhaps the most important change, at least for long-time uh, players who have accumulated a lot of stuff, is a new locker that makes it easier to access your cosmetics like skins and emotes. Not only does the locker have a more streamlined design, but it also allows you to create preset loadouts so you don't have to fiddle with every option to equip your favourite outfit. The update also includes a handful of bug fixes and you can check the complete list there linked within the stream. I mean, all I'm going to say about the locker is uh, the locker is irrelevant because you only need the Kylo Ren skin and that is everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, so while I update the discussion now, big thoughts? Uh, again, I am... Uh going through the update uh sorry going through each week's challenges uh, as it stands i have obviously i haven't started this week yet because i think it only went live yesterday um so i've got to collect something for deadpool i can't remember what it is but i'll be able to i'm sure i'll be able to get the deadpool skin soon i am still thoroughly enjoying playing fortnite uh, i am technically playing it solo at the moment i'm not playing with anyone but Just i'm I <laughs> We've we've mentioned it quite a few times, now. I don't play to win anymore because I'm horrible at the game. Uh, I just play for the missions. I just play for the day. The, I play for the dailies. Play for the battle pass. That's all I'm doing at the moment. If I can get through to the final five, I'll start to take it a little bit more serious. Um, but I'm literally like when you're trying to get pistol kills, I'm dropping into the hottest part of the map to try and find a pistol and then doing it as fast as I can. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the the keeping it fresh, which you can't object against i see spike saying fortnite wants to be warzone i am extremely confident that warzone wants to be fortnite with the amount of content and changes <laughs> that they do on a weekly basis um it's just warzone is catered towards people like spike who don't want to see fortnite um because they think it's a child's game which eh, the bells and whistles are kind of is uh, it's just whatever you find enjoyable but warzone every other battle royale wants to be fortnite that's it it wants to be fortnite. it wants to have as many changes to their battle royale formula um to incorporate what fortnite are doing because they're keeping it they've kept it relevant for so long now that it is the benchmark for any kind of battle royale um i, I can see um activision wanting to put more into warzone to try and keep it fresh they've just added uh well i'm not going to go into that because we will be picking it up in the next time. yeah god, oh. god damn it god damn it i know nearly, nearly ruined it but <laughs> yeah every other battle royale wants to be fortnite uh and it's easy to see why because it's so fresh it's not a child's game. It's just Bob the Builder meets PUBG. That that is one thing that I hate about Fortnite. But it's the mo. It's it, that is the skill gap in Fortnite. Unfortunately, if you can build, then you pretty much won the game. I can't build, which is why me and Graham make such a good team because he builds and I shoot. Simple pew, as that. Pew, pew. I'm terrible at building. I think the best thing about Fortnite for me, if I was to summarize it, PUBG has the the long game. It's the more like risk reward you have to put the time in um and and your players feel like you're going to lose invested time for it fortnite the fact that the gun plays easier means that you can I, I can jump in and have a game that's less likely to trigger me much quicker uh drop in drop out and light hard fun haven't still haven't played warzone yet um although maybe at some point today um uh warzone is kind of between the two but the pace of warzone is probably what makes it like a, that's where the skill gap comes from the skill gap in mm. fortnite is is like say is mastering the building and the combat element whereas warzone is is all about high octane blah, yeah. uh, respawns gulags um buying your teams back in looting up really quickly because you can get looted so fast 
in Warzone. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not so much about the loot; it's about the yeah. constant recycling of the battle. <clears throat> I, I think that I think the skill gap in for in, in in Warzone is so much less than it is in Fortnite because it's Call of Duty. Like, do you know what I mean? Like when you drop in on Warzone, the chance. Jesus Christ, what was going on here? Uh, the, defense, the chance of you finding a decent gun in, war, in Warzone is extremely high, especially if you're playing as like a, a trio in there. It's it, Especially on PlayStation, I haven't played on anything else. Um, the the shooting feels assisted. The bullet drop is non-existent compared to... Well, it, there is bullet drop, but it's nowhere near as uh, severe as it is on PUBG and Fortnite. Um the skill gap on Warzone is so much smaller than Fortnite. I will die on that hill purely because one, the building, and two, all the other mechanics that are extreme uh, that are around it as well. I.e., finding the right guns. Um, yeah, the one thing that annoys me, and it's something that I, I, I can't remember who stream I was doing, having Phantoms or Paul's stream, um, that your health regens in, call, yeah. in in Warzone. Why? Like it's a battle royale. I understand that's the mechanic of Call of Duty, and that's what people come to expect. But the only thing that you have to keep on replenishing is your shields, which you can find at every like every building you go into. There's going to be shields knocking around. I was harding round when I was playing with Barry and Assin the other day. I was harding round five every single game. I'd find at, at least five different shields to be able to put on I every actually, time I got shot. Just I actually quite one. quite like the uh, the regen element. Um, uh, the, the whole thing of it is it's it's the whole thing is based around regen, um, and I think that's because um, using my PUBG experience on they've got a map called Karakin, which is their kind of take on a much smaller thing, sixty four players, much smaller map, like tiny compared to the size of the bigger maps, and you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. But they had to patch it to allow people to get more meds because there wasn't enough, and you were dying due to the war of attrition rather than the actual war of batter, uh, battering people. It's like, I've just fought you, and now I've got to fight someone else, and they're going to win because I'm on 20%. But because the game is pushing you to uh, be fast, be reactive, get back into the game and so on, you were essentially getting done out because you were just unlucky. And I know that's the, that's the point of BR, um, is, is an element of it is luck. But, yeah, I mean, like I said, I haven't played it enough, but from a viewing yeah. standpoint, that kind of gives me the balance in terms of the risk versus reward. The, the, the aim of the game is to attack, attack, attack. The reason you're attacking people is because you want not just to kill them, but there is... Uh, see my mic in, sneaking into the corner of the screen. Uh, there is a reward in terms of... Um, financial reward if you kill them you take their stash of cash which allows you to buy kill streaks which allows you mm. to bring teammates in um but the the risk there is not only that you die uh uh, the, uh yeah the, well the, the biggest risk is that you die and you can't bring your teammates back and so on but that suddenly becomes okay you're losing your health you, you will die you can't bring your teammates back in suddenly people are going to start going actually if i push i've only got 20 percent health because i've just lost my teammate in that fight there's two of them left i'm on my own You'd start to get people going. Ah, do you know what? I'm going to turn, uh, turn tail, go find some health, try loot up a bit more. Maybe scrabble enough cash together to bring one of my teammates back, and then we can. But the fact that you stay behind cover for five seconds then gives you okay. I had three shield bits. We've been in a fight for a few minutes. I'm down to just one. Uh, I've used all my resources, but I've got my full health. I'm going to give it a go, and I think that's kind of where they're coming from. It because because by building in those safety nets, you mm. you you can wait and get your health back up. You can then die and then go to the gulag, but then you can come back in and then die and you can get bought in. I think that encourages people to be the, uh, actually, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit in the corner with my M4, like, what is it, the doc says, ah, little camping bitch is sitting in the corner, ah, ah, where's the doc, is he gonna come in the room? Ah, ah. So. I, 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 I don't think I'll ever be able to be convinced that it's a good idea purely because I, I, I've played survival games pretty much my entire life and I fucking hate the fact that I can go at someone, lay down 30 bullets, fair enough, only 5 or 6 may hit them, and they're down to technically 1 HP, they'll hide behind something for 3 seconds and then have the opportunity to come back at me again. What's the... the there just doesn't seem to be a reward for being aggressive, like... 
it just fucking infuriates me. Like in Fortnite, for instance, if you was to get down to 10 health, you have to throw up a wall and take that medikit. You have to throw up the wall and take your shield. Where in this, you can just dip down behind a set of bins for three seconds and you're back to full health again. Then it's on the attacker to get to you within three seconds. It just, it doesn't reward anything. The, but... the, the difference there though is you, you, you uh, mentioned survival games and this is battle uh, royale uh, and yes you can get your health back in uh, five seconds ten seconds whatever it takes but the time to kill as well uh, there is is so low that that's where the risk reward is you can if you lay down 30 shots and you want to hit five you've cracked their armor and you've dropped their health yeah they can put it back up again but that just means you need to hit 10 shots uh, and that's that's where you start to build in the skill gap then so um the skill gap in fortnite is the building the skill gap in Warzone, uh, just like it was in Blackout, is being able to down your opponent. Uh, well, down your opponent before they hide behind the bins. That's the it point. Is, it, 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 for a battle royale game, for you to have regen, it just my, my fucking brain explodes. Uh, I think it's I think it's dumb, but it's the Call of Duty way. So I, I think it, I think it, it's I'm funny that I'm not enjoying it. I'm not, I think I'm it's not, funny that you think people hide behind bins more in in Warzone than they do in PUBG. <laughs> you clearly need to play PUBG a bit well, more. I don't play PUBG, so yeah, I mean. People hiding in any game, um, it's it's about that's where you get the creative strategies then because it's, it's suddenly not just a run and gun then. It's how do you uh, use your team to get into positions where you can flank them, where you can weasel them out, and I think I, th I think that's where the balance is. I don't I don't mind um, the the respawny regeny bit. Um, I it probably if I play it for a long period of time might I mean not so much the regen but the respawn might. My, uh, yeah, the, re the respawn's cool I like that. I like the gulag thing. Oh no, I love the gulag, yeah. but it's the buying back in over time that, that might start to uh, trigger me in terms of it. Maybe they maybe they need, they need to tweak it and balance it over time. Whereas it costs you four and a half k to get someone back first time, it costs you another fifty percent the next time, another fifty percent the next time. So it becomes harder and harder and harder to bring people back in. Just like in BR when resing someone, it becomes faster and yeah. faster for them to die, kind of thing. So. Yeah, that kind of thing uh, might be, yeah, might work with me. But the the regeny stuff, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's that bad because you can destroy shields so so quickly as well. I mean, usually if you win the fight, you end up walking away with five again because you've got all of your opponents, unless you've had a proper duck and cover, stick your head out, do a shot, oh, mm -hmm. reheal fight. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't mind it too much. Spike, Spike says the thing is with Warzone, it's so fast paced that if you didn't have the regen, then you'd never have time to heal anyway. Yeah, and not only that, the the gas absolutely chunks at you from from like minute one. Yeah, you can get a gas mask which gives you what's that like? It feels like an extra second in in the uh, in the mm. gas, but yeah, uh, it chunks. Uh, I like that regen slash shield element in Warzone. Puts you on the tap more often than not. Just love it overall. Uh, fun. Cod spin and BR. My cup of tea slash coffee slash hot beverage. They've also updated a good few things yesterday. The gas moves a lot quicker now, as we found out to our detriment yesterday. Yeah, I'm just going to fuck! I'm stuck in the gas! Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not that I'm not enjoying it, because from what I've played so far, I am enjoying it, but I I just hate the regen. Any, any regen in any game, I hate it. I'm, yeah, I, I, don't, I honestly don't think there'll be any other argument otherwise because it's just a feature in games that i just hate across the board don't matter if it's call of duty medal of honor or whatever it is even in the full-on campaign it it doesn't reward you enough to be able if you get shot you should be you should have to find stuff to be able to reinstate your health rather than just hiding behind whatever it is that you've got available to you uh, to be able to regen your health I, I do feel it should be a scavenger it's a battle royale you should have to scavenge for everything regardless of whether or not it's bullets uh, meds, guns, whatever. I just don't like the duck cover to be able to regen your health. And that, again, that's across every single game that's ever done that. It's not just for Call of Duty, but that's just a technical glitch that I don't like. Well, uh, like you say, no one's going to change your opinion. No one needs to change your opinion. That's the point. It's yours. Opinions yeah. are like assholes. Bibby has one. Uh, 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 uh. Anyway, uh, interestingly, though, we started off talking about Fortnite and uh, we spent most of the time chatting about Warzone. <laughs> So how good is Fortnite right now? Uh, anyway, with the natural curve there, Fortnite is getting helicopters added uh, and other nice little tweaks as well. Um, but uh, we do have an article on Warzone as well. So we might as well jump to that since we've already started on that. But before I do, to give you a talking point, I reckon the need to make putting on the gas mask yourself. I've died countless times uh, while gatekeeping because the gas has gone over me and I stopped shooting because uh, it tries to put it on. 
As in, you don't actually put it on. I've never actually used it, so if it actually... Um, oh yeah, interesting. Didn't realise that. I, th I would have thought that you did have to equip the gas mask yourself, and that's where you'd, you'd be like, okay, I can stick in the fight holding this spray, but my health's going to get a chunk, or I can stop and put the gas mask on. I thought that's how it was. I didn't realise that it did it automatically, which sucks ass in my, my, my opinion. But uh, anyway, jumping into uh, a little bit of news, which teases up the next bit of news as well. Doom adds at the top. Uh, Call of Duty Warzone now has a solos mode written by Andy Chalk for PC Gamer. It's everyone for themselves. Uh, the free-to-play Modern Warfare Battle Royale spin-off of Call of Duty Warzone got a new way to play today with the addition of solos, a mode that's pretty much the same as the original, except, as the name suggests, it's now for uh, everyone for themselves. Mechanically, not much has changed. Players dropping onto the map with a pistol and a few bullets, and from there, can acquire intel, scrounge for weapons, complete contracts, and do their best to kill each other dead. The circle will close as it normally does, and if you're knocked out, you'll still be sent to the Gulag to battle for the opportunity to redeploy. Uh, redeploy. If you blow it there, you're out for good. Strategy, on the other hand, is completely different. Activism shared a few pointers uh, in that regard in a new blog post. Uh, Intel is your best teammate. Along with the, uh, the paying attention to the TAC map and compass, be especially thorough about finding and equipping reconnaissance tools such as the recon drone, heartbeat monitor and UAV. Same gulag, same player count, no buybacks. Uh, you only have one life to live in solos. Make it count both in the gulag and out in Verdansk. Uh, consider picking up contracts. This especially goes for recon contracts uh, uh, as in solos, the station capture time is halved compared to other modes. Complete contracts and get cash to further build up your loadout at buy stations. Stay down. Uh, Self-revive kits are in solos. If it's getting late into a game and you're wary of an enemy uh, after knocking them to zero health, double check that they are out for good before moving on. Uh, interestingly on that one. Um, I'll come back to it actually. Learn from your solos. Uh, while you may have less chance of winning in solos, take the lessons you learn into your next game with the squad. Who knows, a few solo matches could be the difference between losing your next Battle Royale Trios uh, game and a hard-fought victory. Solos is a good way to practice your, kill, uh, your killer skills because you can explore the map and play with guns, equipment and perks without fear of annoying your squad mates who might actually want to win. With your only sensors and your hood to rely on, with only your sensors and your hood to rely on, a solos match can offer a trial by fire that can provide plenty of learning experiences for your future drops, Activision said. Uh, and it's live now. Um, but yes, the stay down self revive kits. I was watching um, Sacrial Break and Stoddy playing uh, some uh, was on last week, I think it was. And um, Stodd, basically, he was the last one left and he'd bought a revive kit. So it's him versus two other people. Um, and they'd, they'd shot him to the floor, but they'd not had their eyes on the top of the corner when it was like, three people left. So they'd shot him down. He was behind them both. So these two people literally stood in front of him. And he's there going, Duh! sticking his self-revive. Uh, self they both turn around looking for this mystery third person on, on the map. He manages to stand back up, shoots them both to death and gets the win. And it's just like, oh, unlucky. How, how, tr how triggered would you be if you watched that kill come back? Yes, we've downed him. He's dead. Turn around and he stands back up and shoots you both to death. <laughs> no. You will love it. Uh, but on the case of uh, Warzone, there has been tournaments that have been hosted by a friend of the show, Paul. Um, he is doing Warzone tournaments and he's doing another tonight and throughout the week as well. I'm just going going to send you the link to his Twitter because this is definitely something that I think we can get you uh, get on board with. Uh, I haven't seen this. Is this is it, are there custom games in Warzone? Uh, well, there must be. He won his own tournament yesterday, basically. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's ever been Fix. a shit out move, Fix. <laughs> it's winning your own tournament. It's like it's like uh, when when the Doc started uh, hosting. Code Red tournaments on behalf of Boom.TV, and he won the first two. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what you get when you get Shroud in your team, I suppose. Uh, the few times I've tried to self revive, the team have killed me before being able to do so, so the regen is a cool feature for me. Uh, Spike says, Mare Solo is not for me. The fun is playing with others, which is also what she said. Uh, guy's got a headache? Who has? <laughs> I don't know what that refers to. Uh, self revive is OP. Revive ninety percent of the way and wait for your team to tap the revive button and you're back up. Yeah, exactly. I see, I see a lot of people doing that. Yeah, I may have triggered this guy in Warzone. Oh, we've got a tweet from Spike. Whilst Bibby's getting the uh, tweet, or have you sent it over already? Anyway, I'll open this. I've one. just sent it on Slack to you. Uh, so 
as always, we are watching this on a Twitter video, so by the time the action is finished, uh, we will then get a clear video. So, so this is Spike triggering someone on Warzone. Hopefully this doesn't have anything breaks terms of service, but we trust you, Spike. <laughs> I'm intrigued. So for those of you listening, we're watching a video that Spike's putting a gameplay video of him playing Warzone. It's still... What? <laughs> I didn't even see that. I'm going to have to clip it back again. Yeah. <laughs> Unlucky! So anyway, <laughs> the gist of that, for those of you that can't see the video, is uh, Spike was... Uh, we've lost Bib. Oh, which no, is... I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh no! Picture wise, uh, we've, oh. we've lost your camera. Um, but yeah, Spike just jumped in a truck, was driving around, and all of a sudden, uh, why do? Oh, there we go. Hey! <laughs> oh my God, is that a seizure? Why do men suddenly appear? <laughs> yeah, he got squashed by Spike in his truck. Uh, so yes, was on. Now has solos. I do. I do. I do. I'm not sure. Yeah, I kind of. Um, I don't know how that's going to work because Apex added solos. They, they, they didn't have it permanent though, did they? Did they remove it again in the, the end? It was like a short time thing. But uh, all games like this are better when you have someone to play with. I, I that said, I only I play a lot of PUBG. I play solos when I don't have anyone that I know online because that, the downside with games like this is you can quite often get paired with either numpties or people that will just team kill. Can you even team kill in Warzone? I uh, don't know if you can or not, actually, but but yeah, um, Solos does offer offer uh, a nice bit of something in terms of if you don't have the ability to play with us online, but as with anything, Call of Duty in particular is definitely a game that you play with friends. Uh, I think that's kind of, uh, no, you can't, oh, well, you can, well, you can, at least you can't get killed by uh, teammates because you get that all the fecking time of PUBG. Jump into a random squad, mm -hmm. you get looted up, and then suddenly... The uh, two or three people that are together think, oh, well, that guy's got a sniper rifle. I want that. Brah! And take it off you. And I've had that so many times. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Solos is nice. Being added. More features in a game is better, without a doubt. Um, it gets rid of some of that uh, respawning element in the fact that you've got the gulag, but you don't uh, have the ability to use the uh, buy stations to respawn you back in. But yeah, more functions is better. I think, for me, though, it would probably still be a game that I'd want to play with other people. Uh, but let's move on. We've spoken about uh, Warzone a lot longer than we spoke about Fortnite, but we do have one more bit of news uh, to jump on. And uh, this is kind of a precursor of the weekend. Uh, not the weekend, the final stream of the week. So, obviously, uh, let me hide the discussing now on screen. As you can see, Doom Eternal Reviews round up all of the scores written by Shif uh, Sharif Saeed for VG247. So, obviously, Bibi, the man with the sheet, he has his own spreadsheet. He's been keeping all of your scores. Actually, I had Bibi on screen. Let me let me turn that off so you can see Bibi do the uh, the gun finger again. The Bibi, the man with the sheet. Do it again. Do it again. Oh, is that it? Ah, I hate you just went, pew, pew. Uh, <laughs> you, is it, you know what I mean? You can't just do it on cue. It's got a bit... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing you stopped talking then. <laughs> uh, I, I just couldn't hear anything. You started laughing and it just went completely dead. So yeah. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Same with me as well. Uh, so Bibby is the man with the sheet. He has a number of people's scores. So we are kind of taking um, scores from people in the chat in terms of what they believe the final Metacritic ratings will be for games and then putting them against ours to see how people pan out over the course of a period of time just because we can and it'd be a bit of fun um robo baby <laughs> uh, spike yeah we've been struggling with with connection today don't, don't know why we, we assumed it was uh epic launcher at my end and then we assumed it was the uh, ethernet cable at Bibi's end but it's just the internet's just giving in today let's blame it on covid everyone else's um so yes anyway we have a number of scores. What's the scale? Says Rise. Um, well, Bibi has the sheet. I don't know. Uh... I do. I have it open in front of me. The scale is what is based on Metacritic. So, what do you reckon that the score would be? 
uh, when the game match because the scores are out now. However, I'm not. Inc- we're hung- start again. The scores are out for Doom now. However, the game isn't out, so we will then we'll, on Friday when the game is out, we will look at the scores then and give it a judge. Same with Animal Crossing; they're both out on the same same day. So Metacritic is out of 100. Yeah, and the um, there's a number of reviews, so we'll obviously jump through these, but some outlets are holding back their reviews because uh, they want to include some online elements as well. So some of them are only giving them provisionals. Is it out of 10? No, out of 100. So Metacritic kind of uh, puts all of the scores and then puts them together out of 100. One thing I didn't ask, uh, which you may have discussed, because I wasn't actually in the stream where you did that. I, did, I dropped in the stream to throw my scores in, but... So the Metacritic scores, are we taking a specific format or are we getting the average of all of the formats there? So Doom has like 87-ish for PS4, but it's like 90 or something like that for Xbox. So are we averaging Xbox PC and Stadia, if that gets one, and uh, Xbox? Are we averaging the scores or are we just t- uh, taking one format and running with that? Uh, it's a very good question, actually, because I completely forgot that it has various platforms. Taking the average would be shit, especially if there is a Stadia version of the game because that might end up getting reviewed at 63 rather than it being 190 plus on PC. Um, maybe so we... do we just take the highest one? I'd, I, I'd maybe... Uh, I was thinking we take the average, but let's just drop off the uh, elephant in the room that is Stadia. So if, if a game has, like, let's say... Satisfactory fact, format. Asim's got the perfect, got the perfect way there. Oh, PS4. Okay, if, if it was said PS4, yeah. then that there we go. That's it. Let's go with PS4. P- PS4 is going to be the fundamental version of the game. Well, not the fundamental version of the game. It is going to be the biggest. It's got the biggest install base. So I think if it is a cross-platform games, then we just take the PlayStation one because a lot more people have access to it. How does that sound? That sounds good. If we if it was previously something we said as well, then it makes it easier to stick to. So da da. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, I'd, I'd honestly say for Doom about a sixty-four slash sixty-five. Ooh. Oof. Uh, six... Ooh, right. Okay. Let me stick you on the list. Uh, so Rise is sixty-four. Okay. Should we should we quickly run through Rise's scores then? Uh, so for Doom, he's got sixty-four, sixty-five out of hundred. What do you think about Animal Crossing, Rise? Animal Crossing. Yeah. I uh, I didn't I didn't give this one that much hope if I'm being honest. See, I I went the other way. Uh, Spike said one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I think Spike's excited. <laughs> See, I I was around. I initially said something like eighty-two ish for Doom. Another, I think two other people had had it or something already. So then I was like, okay, Devil's Advocate. I will go low because I saw other people had gone high. I think I may have gone wrong uh, there from what I'm seeing so far. But I think Animal Crossing will be one hundred for me. But I put it as lower as it's very niche. The thing is, Animal Crossing is very loved. I wasn't sure with that because uh, that was kind of my quick. 10 pence review on when I was uh, came and stood on the stage I was like Animal Crossing has a lot of love out there could it be more of the same I've never played it so I don't really know and I can't, I honestly yeah. can't even tell you what I what I gave as Animal Crossing Rise says probably going to sit around a solid 92 because of the nostalgia Nintendo gamers have interesting interesting what's the next one babe uh Half-Life Alex Half-Life Alex oh, yeah I can't remember what I gave for any of these <laughs> I was like uh 71 <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to hear other people. Well, the thing is, Half-Life Alex doesn't have that big of an install base purely because to get the best way to play it would be to use the, the Valve Index, and that's £1,000. <laughs> so unless you've got like a quest or a go that you're able to tie up to your PC, then it's not going to be the best experience for most. So it's good. I think it is going to be a niche score. Rise, that's the thought for me. Can I just say below 50? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so Resident Evil 3 Remake. If you have anything below 99 on this rise, you will be banned from the channel. <laughs> uh, Half-Life lived on. Uh, it's being ahead of the curve. Now it's dated, in my opinion. Uh, Interesting. It looks it looks dynamite. I just will not be able to play it. I don't have the facilities to be able yeah. to play it. The thing is, though, is it's like... My issue is, is what you just mentioned there, the index. A lot of people will be playing PC games... Uh, on a PC that doesn't cost a thousand pounds, so buying a peripheral that costs more than the actual console, obviously it's a PC. <laughs> please don't hear me. It just sounds bizarre. A thousand pound for an add-on. Uh, wait, I've not kept up. Are they touching mechanics on it or not? Um, yeah. So, the, so the the Valve Index is the ones that 
the uh, VR straps go over your fingers so that when you move your fingers, your character's fingers move too, not just your hands and your wrists. Uh, Spike says nine. Just nine. <laughs> Kappa. Do you, actually, do you wanna do you wanna run over the games that we have so we can? Like... Yeah. So we've got another three. So basically, we're doing them in two month blocks. So it started the beginning. So it was uh, March and April for these two, and then it'll be uh, June, July for the next two. Um, so we've got Resident Evil Three, Final Fantasy Seven, and Predator Hunting Grounds. They see March and April off. Uh, so the ones that we need your scores from, mate, is uh, Resident Evil 3, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and Predator Hunting Grounds. Okay, I'll, I'll put that in the chat, just so that he has it there written. Um, and then whilst um, uh, Rise drops his scores in there, as I think about his scores, I will run through this uh, Doom article yeah. that we did have on screen. So Doom Eternal Reviews Roundup, all the scores. Once again, written by Sharif Saeed for VG247. Can Doom Eternal's can Doom Eternal repeat 2016's landmark success? Doom Eternal, the anticipated sequel to the 2016 reboot, is a few short days away. Eternal builds on the ideas set by its predecessor in almost every way. Good start. Uh, the Doom Slayer is more mobile thanks to the ability to dash and the use of a grappling hook which will come in handy in some of Eternal's light platforming sections but offer an even bigger advantage in combat. The world and story are better emphasised this time around. Even the areas you visit and the demons you plough through have all been expanded and upgraded. Also, new this time uh, around is a free battle pass with seasonal progression. Uh, through it you'll be able to unlock some ludicrous skins for the Doom Slayer as well as some of the game's many enemies. The unicorn outfit for the Slayer and the hipster uh, arch file are just two of them uh, you'll also get to see uh, you get to see all of that personalization in cutscenes too like its predecessor doom eternal reaffirms id software's commitment to the 60 frames per second gameplay across all systems except for switch uh, resolutions uh, as they tend to do will vary from one console to another pc players however will be able to push things well past consoles thanks to a fairly decent set of requirements which is linked in the article so without further ado let's re re read the reviews uh, the vg24 7 review gives it a four out of five IGN a 9 out of 10, VGC 4 out of 5, PC Gamer 94 out of 100, Video Gamer gives it 8, Vid uh, Games Radar 3.5 out of 5, Steve Iver 9 out of 10, EGM 4, point, uh, 4 out of 5, Press Start gives it a solid 10 out of 10, GameSpot 8 out of 10 which is currently in progress, then you've got US Gamer currently in progress, Eurogamer obviously don't do scores, and Jeu Actu which is a French site, gives it 18 out of 20. And then, what are you laughing at? Why did they include Euro Gamer in there? If they've not got any scores. It just seems effort of putting it down it's, if, not, if they don't review. It's, just, it's, it's weird. SEO, that's what it is. It's that, it's that backlink. That's what they want. That's what it is. Uh, and Spazio Games from Italy uh, has given it 9.1. So Doom Eternal launches this Friday uh, on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. A Switch version in the works due out later this year. And it doesn't mention anything about Stadia, but it's supposed to be out on Stadia too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Spike says, Spazio! <laughs> in the chat uh, I absolutely 100% could have butchered that it could be something completely different I am fully aware <laughs> uh, Doom Eternal Review Scores okay I'll add that on the screen as discussing now I've just seen Rise's reply there ah Resident Evil 3 I can see that being a good 90 minimum very good sir uh, Final Fantasy will crash in my opinion um, oh, the screen's been cut off. No, <laughs> and say, did you say that he's saying, ah, saying about 78? And I have high hopes for Predator Hunting Grounds, so I'm going to give it 100. If it flops, I have failed my mission. You and Fat Man Dave in the chat will get on like a house on fire because he's <laughs> the only other person in this world that's giving it the time of day at the moment. I kind of went the other way. I think I went uh, Final Fantasy 7. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I thought it would do well. Uh, and I thought Predator Hunting Ground would not do well. Um, Resi will be a 50 now, and Bibi will go into self-isolation. <laughs> <laughs> After I finish playing it, of course. Uh, what what were, what did I give for Final Fantasy VII? Predator. Oh, Final Fantasy well, VII. I, you gave I, it 94. 
Yeah, so I was thinking then 93, uh, but 94. I think maybe someone else had 93, so I went up to try kind of like... Yeah, I went 92. Differentiate. And what did I have for Predator? I think I went low on that, 70 something. 71. 71, yeah. Final Fantasy VII won't crash, says NXT. Yeah, I, I, I think Final Fantasy VII is one of those games where it, there's so much demand and hype for it that it will command scores. I know that there is, there is a tightrope where you have so much demand for a game that it can fail cataclysmically i don't think that will happen with final fantasy 7 though uh well the, the the biggest bugbear that would have been uh coming out for the remake wouldn't necessarily have been the story because it's just like a revised uh plot scheme i don't think it's going to follow it entirely from the original um but it was the it was the battle mechanics and people have taken to it very kindly on social media since the demo came out so i do still see it high i still still i don't think it'll crash i don't think it'll do the, i don't think it'll do bad i think it'll do good if not better than the original uh i'm gonna just i've just seen david's comment on uh Predator. He said he's had to give it 100 uh, as he's got Predator 1 and 2 on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray and downloaded it. I'm going to see if uh, Predator Concrete Jungle uh, has a Metacritic score. Because that was the last one I played and I remember that being naff. I enjoyed it because I like Predator. There you go, 47 is the, is the Metacritic for, for the last <laughs> Predator uh, game that I played. I mean, that was on PS2 so we are almost three generations ago obviously it's only two in terms of this actual title um but yes uh the original final fantasy on playstation one held a 92 and down as a metacritic must play so i i think it'll either equal or be better than the original interesting interesting now i know that's a 92 I'm either split, and it's either going to be just below or just above. It's either going to be... The, I, can, yeah. I can read the reviews it's now. A tough it's, one. it's everything that I've played, but better. Or it's 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 everything that, I, that I've played before, but not quite as much. It's, it's either going to be like that, so I think it's going to be up there. I think this is the hardest one out of the list that we've got to try and put a score on by far. By far, me, me personally, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to rank Resident Evil the highest anyway. The others are it's just based on nothing really but this game is playstation one if there was a game that you put across any other game for the playstation itself as a uh, staple of the console final fantasy 7 is easily in the top five so to try and put a score on a remake version of the mo one of the most iconic games ever is the hardest thing to yeah. do and i imagine it's going to be the hardest thing to review as well yeah i reckon so because the, the thing with reviewing such a personal game like the thing with Final Fantasy 7 is you have not rose tinted glasses but you have your own emotional attachments to that game mm -hmm. um, different different ways I, I I have some but not as much as a lot of other people by any stretch of the imagination I've hardly played any of it but I have some nods back to it to childhood and, and that and that adds a level of subjectivity uh, in terms of I mean obviously uh reviews are subjective anyway it's opinion you you, you can you're a hat you are able to disagree with the reviews that's why metacritic exists so it can kind of give mm -hmm. you like a, a pull together of everyone's opinions to try give you a bit more of an informed opinion but you still have your own opinion uh, but final fantasy 7 will be so emotionally charged based on everything that's happened it'll be so hard to i mean it's not hard to review but it's it's not even that it's hard to justify it but i imagine that there will be a lot of people in the comments going 92 he should be 100 or or 92 he should be 57 or whatever so final fantasy 7 will do well but might get marked down for stories slash character tweaks in uh, and the episodic nature yeah potentially imagine a predator br game oh do you know what yes i'll, I'll continue with this one hundred players and one player who gets to play as the predator essentially the predator will play the part of the zone i kind of like that idea that's that's like the thanos fortnite kind of thing and there is a mm. there's a a paintball thing like in Leeds that has that everyone runs around with like bog standard guns and then there's this dude running around in the treetops as the predator with a fucking bazooka <laughs> it's like a super, super powered <laughs> weapon uh, there will be no middle ground it will flop hard or be a huge success and I agree with that it should be the first game on uh, PS4 uh, da, 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 da. Uh, running back through make sure I've not missed anything so yes doom is doing pretty well at the moment as we can see that everything is eights and nines out of ten we will we'll leave the metacritic stuff i mean obviously you guys can check it for yourselves if you want we will come back to that on friday when the game officially launches at this point in time 
I don't think I'm doing very well in my guesses. At this point in time, I think Bibby's doing pretty decent, to be fair. Uh, but we will see on Friday. But that does mean that we can move on to this. So we have a box which is, as you can see uh, from this on screen, the Doom Eternal Collector's Edition. Well, it technically isn't. Uh, because we don't have the full collector's edition. We have one specific item. Uh, well, we have two, actually. So you can see there, the spaces where there would be other bits like steel books and things like that. We don't have any of that because we, we basically made a deal with the devil just to get the one thing that we wanted. And I say we, I uh, absolutely tapped up a good man that I know at Bethesda uh, to send me one more thing, but I haven't opened this yet, so let's, let's check this out. Uh, so we have, can you see this at all, Bib? Or are you just like... Uh, no, I am com I, I'm completely blind. Okay. Well, I have a little roll. I'm guessing it's some sort of poster or something that I can't get into. Wow. One man defeated by paper live on Twitch. Uh, so let's open this up. There we go. Yeah, this is... So we have... Ah! I can't find the camera. There we go. Some nice posterage stuff. Let's leave that. Let's leave that because that's not what we want to see. What we want to see is this. Uh, you will have no doubt seen other people, uh, content creators and influencers, getting these on social media yesterday. But a very good chap at Bethesda UK has provided us with our very own Doomslayer helmet. How cool is that? Uh, so, yeah, there we go. I think you're being accused of uh, being an influencer number whore. Me? I'm an influencer number yes. whore. Uh, do you know what? If, if it means that I get stuff like this then you can call me whatever you want. Uh, although, <laughs> although to be fair, uh, uh, ah, that's why you put it high on the scale. If anything, I actually put it fairly low on the scale. <laughs> so you will find out on Friday. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yes. That is, that is class. Okay, put it on, says Dad Lad. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. Ignore the hat here. Uh, I can't hear anything as well now because I don't have my headset on, so please don't insult me that much. Look at that, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a toss, it's a toss. Fuck you. Also, does not get used nearly enough as an insult. I'm bringing it back. What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Spice said it's amazing. It covers your face. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> this is actually pretty cool. And the thing is, I can't actually see what the hell's going on here, so I've got, I'll just have to watch it. Can someone take a screen cap or something? <laughs> like, I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, Alright, I can do it. I can send it to you on Discord. In fact, yeah, take a screen cap, because this can be the thumbnail for today. I don't know if I'm on the screen as well. Yeah, I preferably not. Okay, give us a thumbs up, babe. One minute. No, I look like fucking Boris Johnson if I'm giving a thumbs up. Thumbs up, babe. That. No, he can't hear me, can he? he yeah, can't hear me. can. No, not that. That wasn't thumbs up. <laughs> no, I don't want to look like fucking Boris Johnson. I'm not having it. Okay, give us a dab then. A dab? Oh, I'll give you a dab. Okay, I, ca I can't do it. I can only do it one-handed. I look like I'm sneezing. Uh, there you go. I think that's the most cringiest thing that I think I've ever done. It's all right. You're live on Ice Cream Uploads where everything is cringy. <laughs> There you go, there's a thumbnail for today sorted right out. I don't, that means I don't have to use my shit photoshopping skills. <laughs> I apologise for anyone that's never been in this before and just thinking, what the hell are these two prats doing? Graham Days and Joby. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually pretty cool, is this? It's actually pretty comfy. I'm wearing this every time we do a stream now. <laughs> please, please go and pick your daughter up from school with that on your head. Uh, it's funny, I was talking to her yesterday um, and she was saying that some kids are turning up. At, oh, let's put the hat on. Get rid of the hat here. Some kids are turning up at school wearing uh, face masks and stuff. And I was like, Sh I'm well sending you in, in that. You'll be like the coolest slash weirdest kid in the school. Someone sneezes and all of a sudden fucking Doomslayer rocks up at the back of the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I've just realised as well. Like I'm, I'm dabbing on that picture, but you look I'm like you're sneezing to give someone a backhand. Uh, I've, 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 I've done that Paul Pogba sneeze into your elbow. Save the world by... <laughs> the slap slayer. <laughs> I, li I like to see how 
emotionally supportive the chat is. Improvement, says Dad and Lad Gaming as soon as I put a big full face mask on. Fuck you! Graham Day's a job it. Darth Pillock! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, like uh, that. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> he said sneeze. He's right. We need to wrap this up because Joseph's going to be here in five minutes and I still need to start the studio out. God damn it. God damn it. So there we go. We are done for the day. We will be back, obviously, tomorrow. I'm going to try and move my camera because there's a bit of dust on it. We will be back at tomorrow, 10 a.m. Brightly and Sprightly on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. We may or may not have some additional content today depending on what the crack is with the uh, PlayStation architecture deep dive conference thing so if we do just follow now you will get notified when we go live so it's the best way or just keep an eye on twitter at ice cream uploads on twitter uh, we may also have additional content tomorrow depending on how baby uh, manages to sort out his massive resident evil 3 erection when i say massive i don't mean in terms of size for him i just mean in terms of relativity for oh, everything shit, else. it's tomorrow isn't it <laughs> yeah oh. <laughs> oh my god as if i forgot <laughs> Uh, so yeah, make sure you check all our... Uh, one one thing that I did type in the chat, but I haven't actually mentioned, me and Bibi didn't coordinate. We are wearing Ice Cream Uploads jerseys today just because they are shit hot. Exclamation mark merch in the chat if you want to get your own, by the way. Um, and finally, anything you want to add before we disappear, Bib? Yes. If you do see anything knocking around the video game hemisphere, i.e. social media, then do feel free to add your thoughts and impressions. Tag Ice Cream Uploads at We've Got Bibinho and at Graham underscore Day into your comments we'll take your thoughts and impressions and our thoughts and impressions in the show the very next day god damn right we will and if you have your emotes please feel free to drop them in the chat now as we always end the show with the exact same message ladies and gentlemen have a lovely day and remember to stay frosty